Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Sir. Senator. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah. Up next, oral arguments in the Raymond Simmons versus American Airlines case before the Ninth Circuit U.S. Appeals Court. The case alleges American Airlines removed passenger Raymond Simmons from the airplane because of his race. The case was heard in San Francisco on February 15, 2002. Good morning. Good morning. May it please the court, my name is Doug Clark. Mr. Skinner and I are students at the University of Arizona College of Law Pro Bono Appellate Project. We're supervised by Dr. Willie Jordan Curtis. We represent Raymond B. Simmons. Speak right up so we can hear you. <clears throat> Mr. Simmons is an African-American man. He was on an American Airlines flight from San Francisco to Dallas-Fort Worth. He was deeply humiliated and emotionally distressed when he was singled out in front of all the other passengers, removed from his seat by flight attendants, and marched off the plane. American Airlines claims that they acted solely based on a passenger complaint and that they were following procedure. Their actions represent discrimination. If, it had been, if the complaint had been lodged against any other person on the plane except for a minority, the pilot would not have ordered that person off the plane. How do you know that? How do you know that? That, that sir, How is our... How do you know that any other passenger would not have been removed? That's, that is our contention, sir. However, the issue before the court here today was whether summary judgment was wrongly granted by the magistrate judge below when he granted summary judgment on a motion that contained absolutely no admissible evidence. Let me ask you this question. There's no, is there any doubt here that if the decision was made by the captain of this flight? No, no, there's- He made the decision. Right, there's- And is there any doubt about what information was available to him at the time he made his decision? That is actually a point of contention. Was the captain told that a passenger was using foul language or misbehaving in some way? Or was the captain told that a black man was using foul language? That's your claim. Yes. There's no information concerning on what the captain was told before he made his decision. Correct. And is there any doubt about what the captain, in his decision, why he based his decision on what, on the information? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Well- Is there any doubt about the base, the purported basis for the captain's decision? The purported basis? Yes. Meaning that there- Safety. Yes. As a matter of fact, in Mr. Simmons' verified complaint, which he signed under penalty of perjury- No, I think you're misunderstanding the question. Okay. And maybe I've joined in sort of making it confusing. Something happened, a passenger complained. That passenger was moved to first class as an accommodation for the complaint. Am I correct so far? Correct. This is undisputed. The flight attendant then went to the captain and reported what had occurred, right? Correct. We do not know at this point the precise details of what was reported to the captain. Correct. After what was reported to the captain, the captain made the decision to ask that the passenger be removed. Correct so far? That is correct. Is there any doubt that the basis, the reason he articulated for removing the passenger was his concern for the safety of the other passengers? There, we don't know. The pilot never articulated any reason. It's not listed in- We don't have his affidavit? We don't. There isn't a pleading. There isn't an affidavit. There isn't an interrogatory that references the pilot at all, other than in reference to the event report that American Airlines produced, stating the pilot had ordered Mr. Simmons off the plane. So your claim is that this should go to trial? Correct. Mr. Simmons did not have an opportunity. The American Airlines never showed a non-discriminatory reason, which is the second prong in the Verdeen McDonald Douglas test. I understand. What is our standard of review on a denial of summary, and a granting of summary judgment? It's de novo. Right. And in this case, the magistrate judge took as truth the event report 
which was being offered for the truth of the matter asserted, and undisputed facts, which in fact were disputed in this case, because undisputed facts are facts that both parties stipulate to, and there was no agreement between Mr. Simmons and American Airlines in regards to these undisputed facts. The magistrate judge made his decision based on hearsay, a hearsay event report that was presented for the truth of the matter asserted. The report itself doesn't offer any, doesn't offer any rel relevant evidence. We don't dispute that the flight attendant made a report to the captain and the captain removed Mr. Simmons. That was why Mr. Simmons filed suit. That is the only thing that the event report could even offer to the court that isn't hearsay. Well, you're right at five minutes. So we'll let Judge Fitzgerald is going to ask you a question. Yeah. But after you respond to it. Was there any evidence that the captain in making his decision considered race at all? There was no evidence presented either way. However, in the event report, the statement that American Airlines claims that Mr. Simmons made was damn white bitch, which would indicate that, would indicate that Mr. Simmons was a minority. And so that the captain could have made his decision based on that. But anything that the captain articulated, anything in what he may have articulated that indicates a racial presence? The captain didn't articulate anything. Okay. There is no evidence. There's been nothing presented in regards to how or why the captain made his decision. All right. I understand. With the courts. You've divided the argument. Is it time for your co-counsel? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we will give you a minute or so for rebuttal, but you'll have to choose between the two of you who does it. We don't allow you both to do it. Your Honor, I will do rebuttal. And I would like to respond to Judge Fitzgerald's question. The question is, what do we know? Well, to be honest with you, we don't know if the passenger was moved to first class. We don't know if the things were said. We don't even know if the incident occurred. And the reason we don't know that is because the entire evidence that has been presented is pure hearsay. We've never got a chance in court to find out whether those facts really occurred. All we know is if you take the hearsay, if you use the fact that the event report could perhaps be used not for the truth of the matter, we would agree that he got kicked off the airplane. We have absolutely no reason to know whatsoever why he got kicked off the airplane. Now, very quickly, I would like to move just very quickly to the issue of emotional distress. It was never discussed in the court below. And, in fact, Mr. Simmons said, I was thrown off the airplane, and I quote, with establishment discrimination before an audience of 100 passengers, all to my humiliation and distress. Well, the court below did not deal with it. There's three possible ways to look at this if one reads a pro se complaint that's very broadly, which they should in this case. The first one is attached to the actual civil rights claim itself, in which case it would fail or it would succeed if the civil rights claim succeeded. Counsel, would you please speak up? I'm sorry, Your Honor. It would fail or it would succeed if the civil rights claim itself failed or succeeded. The other one is under California law for over 100 years, it has been possible to claim that there was a violation of the requirement for good faith and fair dealing in a contract. And under that test, Mr. Simmons would not be required to undergo the Burdine test, the three-prong test. All he would have to show was a violation of a contract and a violation of good faith and fair dealing in that contract. I want to ask you a question that's purely directed to what information of any kind that Mr. Simmons put in the record. Yes, Your Honor. With that preface, the question is, was anything said to Mr. Simmons when he was removed from the flight other than, will you please come with us? Your Honor, to the best of our knowledge, from what we have in the record below, nothing was said to him until he stepped off the airplane. Then there were some remarks he made. Can't we assume that some words were spoken to him that caused him to gather his stuff up and walk off the plane? No, Your Honor. Get your stuff and walk off the plane. That's what he claims happened. Was that said in some desultory way as far as we know? Does he claim that? He claims that he was humiliated in front of all the passengers. I understand that. But was the language that was used that resulted in him getting out of his seat, packing up his gear, and exiting the flight, does he claim it was 
uh, desultory, inflammatory, derogatory, or racially demeaning? Your, Your Honor, I do not know the answer to that question because in the record below it's not indicated. He did file some kind of affidavit. He, he did indeed, and it was Is a verified complaint. Is there anything complaint. in that affidavit that, that would respond to the question I've just asked you? Your Honor, not that I know of. That, uh, that language used uh, against him was inflammatory in itself. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. We'll give you about a minute for rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honor. We'll hear from American Airlines. May it please the court, I'm Philip Ross and I represent American Airlines, the defendant and appellee. American Airlines does not discriminate against any of its passengers and there was absolutely no evidence presented in this case that even raises a suspicion of discrimination. Are pilots permitted to remove passengers for any reason? Pilots are permitted to remove passengers where they believe that there is a safety concern. How about answering my question? For any reason? Are they permitted to remove any passenger for any reason? Not for any reason, although they do have wide discretion under 49 U.S.C. 4492. And isn't there a booklet of uh, recommended procedures for the removal of a passenger for safety reasons? American Airlines has safety policies. Was that published. followed in this case? It was followed in this case, Your Honor. Could you explain to me how? It was followed in this case because a report was made to the captain that Mr. Simmons was engaged in certain obscenities. Was he and warned? He was not warned, but the policy- Isn't that required? No, it is not required. The policy provides that the captain has the discretion to remove an uh, individual prior to takeoff if the captain believes that the person's engaged in misconduct- and Aren't there different good. categories of, uh, of passenger behavior? Those categories of passenger behavior, behavior deal with in-flight disturbances and have nothing to do with this case. And so it's the airline's position that this was not an in-flight disturbance? No, the, the plane had not yet taken off. It was still on the ground. This was prior to takeoff. And therefore, the provision in American Airlines safety policy that applies is the policy that says the captain can remove a passenger prior to takeoff if the captain believes that the conduct that's been reported could possibly escalate during flight. Let me ask you this question. Um, it, it's the airline's position that the passenger, the other passenger who complained, the woman, was, was as an accommodation moved up to first class. Is that correct? Yes, she was. Okay. Uh, did she complain thereafter? She did not complain thereafter, but she she was concerned enough by the particular. You can just answer the question, no. counsel. If you want to argue, you'll be, be given plenty of opportunity to do that. I promise you. No, she. So did she not. did not complain after she was moved. No, she did not. So as far as we know on this record, she was entirely satisfied by the flight attendant's decision, which was within that attendant's authority to move the passenger to first class. Correct. 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 Was there any complaint from any other passenger after that about Mr. Simmons' behavior? No. Uh, what do we know about what it was that Mr. Simmons said? The report from the passenger was that Mr. Simmons was <coughs> stating out loud that, uh, making references to damn white <coughs> bitches. Okay. Was he talking on the cell phone? Uh, the evidence was not that he was talking on a cell phone, but simply that he was making those statements. Did the passenger say the, that the statement was directed to her? No, the passenger did not say it was directed to her. And that, that's, if I can, Your Honor, that is one of the concerns here. The, the statement clearly indicates that Mr. Simmons was upset with respect to some unspecified person. Could have been um, another passenger, could have been a, a flight attendant. We don't know, but he was upset about a person. It's not simply that he's using a profanity, but that the profanity he's using in this case indicates that he's upset about some unspecified person. That's what makes the safety concern real in this case. Do we know what the attendant said to the captain? We know that the attendant reported. Do we know what the attendant said to the captain? Was, did she, did the flight attendant, was it a female flight attendant? It was a female flight attendant. Okay. Do we have an affidavit from her? No, we do not. Was her deposition taken? No, it was not. Do we have an affidavit from the captain? No, we do was not. Was his deposition taken? No, it was not. Then I suspect the answer to my question is that we don't know what the flight attendant said to the captain, right? What we know from the, that's correct. What we know from the record is that the captain made the determination that Mr. Simmons be removed and that he made a decision in order to guarantee the safety of other passengers. What harm would befall American Airlines if there were an evidentiary hearing at which time the attendant 
to testify as to what she saw and observed and what she reported to the captain, and the captain stated uh, his basis for deciding to remove the passenger. Well, the harm, Your Honor, is that we provided sufficient evidence on summary judgment of a legitimate non-discriminatory reason, and under the Burdine test, and under the McDonnell Douglas te test, which everyone agrees is the appropriate test here, Mr. Simmons had the burden at that point to present substantial specific evidence of pretext, and, that, and he agrees. There's no dispute that he presented no such evidence. The, the primary argument made by Mr. Simmons' counsel on appeal is that the event report is supposedly inadmissible hearsay. Let's assume, let's assume that it is. Under Ninth Circuit law, if an if, uh, 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 employer or person who is alleged to have engaged in discriminatory actions, words or conduct, uh, articulates a, uh, a non-discriminatory reason, a non-protextual reason for, for what they did, and the respondent proves that that's inaccurate, does that meet the burden? The respondent can meet the burden in two ways, either by direct evidence or by circumstantial evidence. Isn't the there circumstantial reasons. evidence in this record that American Airlines did not follow its own safety procedures? No, because the only safety procedure that's applicable here and the only safety procedure that um, American Airlines has referenced is a decision to remove this individual prior to takeoff based on a safety concern. There's no discussion. Can you read to the court the, that provision or cite yes, that absolutely. provision in the record that deals with passenger behavior before takeoff? It is in the, tell, tell us where it is in the record. Yes, the Italian supplemental excerpt of record. It's under tab 4, page 41. And I'll read additional techniques to prevent misconduct from escalating. Passenger misconduct requiring captain's attention prior to departure may result in removal of the passenger from the aircraft. The captain should assess whether the misconduct on the ground may escalate in flight. What, that is, okay, what, there is no specific procedure associated with What that. information did the captain have that indicated that the behavior would escalate during the flight? The information the captain had was what was reported to him. And the captain had... Which we don't know. You've, you've previously conceded we don't know. All of the specifics other than there was a report of, of the obscenities being made. Is there anything even in the report that suggests that, that there was some danger of this behavior escalating? Well, what the report says is that, and I quote, the captain made a decision in order to guarantee the safety of other passengers. And the captain... You have a very interesting habit of not answering sorry, my I... questions. My question is, is there anything in that report or anything in the record that indicates the captain was given information which would indicate that this incident was going to escalate? Not Isn't the I answer no? Not a, no. Isn't that sufficient to send this case back for a hearing on the merits? I, I don't believe so, Your Honor. Tell us why. Well, I, I don't believe that it's sufficient to send it back because what's in the record is the articulation of a non-discriminatory reason. And what's important here is that, first of all, there was no objection that was raised below to the admission of the evidence. The evidence I assume report. for the purpose of the question, that the previous questions I've asked you, that that report was fully admissible and would be at any hearing on the merits. Okay. Now go ahead and argue. Okay. In order to come up with a showing of pretext, there has to be significant and substantial evidence. There is no evidence in the record to suggest that the captain acted for any other reason other than the safety of the passengers. Let's the suppose that what the flight attendant said, this is a hypothetical question, when she went to the captain, was the captain white? We don't know the race of the captain. We don't know that. Do we know the race of the flight attendant? We don't know the race of the flight well, attendant. Let's suppose it was a white flight attendant and a white captain, and what she came back and said was, there's a black man back there making bad remarks about white women, and we need to get him off the plane. Would that uh, be discriminatory? Possibly if there was evidence of that. However, there's Well, no I ask you to assume that for the purpose of my question. 
Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay. Would that constitute a sufficient case to have a hearing on the merits on a discrimination claim? That would possibly. Okay. However, there's no evidence of that in the record. The plaintiff had an opportunity to engage in discovery and chose not to. He's pro se, isn't he? He is pro se, but pro se plaintiffs are still held to the same evidentiary standards under Rule 56E as any other party. Plaintiff did not engage in discovery. Plaintiff did not put in any of this evidence. One can speculate about what may have happened, but in the absence of any evidence supporting that, that doesn't constitute substantial specific evidence for purposes of preventing summary judgment under Rule 56. That's what's absent here. I agree, Your Honor, that a different record might come up with a different result, but the fact is that the record that was presented and the record that was available to the district court is the record that exists because plaintiff didn't engage in any of this discovery. It was the plaintiff's obligation. The plaintiff has the burden of proof to present specific substantial evidence of pretext, and he didn't do that. Okay. We understand your argument. Thank you very much for your argument. We'll give the other side. Your Honor, if I could just say, I have 45 seconds. No, you're out of time. Thank you. We'll give you one minute for rebuttal. Your Honor, in his statement, or in his argument, counsel said that this should be applied as an in-air incident. However, if you'll refer to— I didn't hear him argue that, but even if he did, the thing I would really like you to rebut is his argument, which has some sense to it, that even though he was pro se, that Mr. Simmons had the burden of coming forward with at least some evidence to show that the actions of American Airlines were based on discriminatory reasons. What is that evidence? Your Honor, it is the verified complaint that he signed. When he signed that, that became different from Celotex, for instance, or even Block v. L.A. The point here is that— What specifically does he allege in the complaint? He alleges— Factually. Factually, he alleged that a flight attendant came up, removed him from the plane, and to his emotion and to his humiliation and emotional distress, he was not told about it. He doesn't describe how it happened, but from his point of view, he didn't know why he was being removed, and he was humiliated. Now— Let me ask you a question. Yes, Your Honor. My question is this. You're not claiming here in this proceedings now that if the pilot considered the safety of the aircraft and made a mistake on considering that, you're not—that's not your claim, is it? Your claim is discrimination. Am I right? Yes, that is his complaint. Okay. So even if the pilot made an error here as to whether or not the safety of the plane was involved and the other passengers on it, that doesn't—that's not—that doesn't dispose of the matter. You're saying that there has to be discrimination of some sort established. Yes, Your Honor. We want a chance to go into trial and establish that. And my earlier—and what I was trying to get at earlier was what is the evidence that you're relying on of discrimination? Your Honor, he signed as a verified complaint his complaint. That's the only thing that was signed. However— Did he say he was black, the pilot was white, the attendant was white, and he was black? No, Your Honor. Where is the claim of discrimination? The claim comes from his statement of what happened. I was taken off the plane because I was black and— Because I was black? That's what his—that's what his complaint is. It's a discrimination because he was black. That's exactly what he claims. But he does not give the race of the attendant or the pilot? No, Your Honor. I mean, he certainly didn't even see the pilot. He wouldn't know the race of the pilot. And we don't know even for sure the race— He could have discovered it, but of course he didn't. But he would know the race of the attendant. Your Honor, from what I—the way I understand it, there may have been two attendants. There may have been a flight attendant and an employee. He might have known. I understand, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your argument. Thank both sides for their argument. And the court will stand in recess for about five or so minutes. Thank you.
Join us on America and the Courts, Saturday evening at 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. for viewers on the West Coast.